Today we're unboxing the Bamboo Labs P2S. The printer that everyone keeps calling the X1C's little brother. Listen, if this thing prints as good as everyone says, I don't care if it comes in a cereal box. But we're gonna find out, and we're gonna find out right now. <laughs> Welcome back to Make or Build It. I'm Brian DeLuca, and if you are new to 3D printing, welcome to the 3D printing community, and make sure you hit the follow button. Today, we are unboxing Bamboo Labs uh, P2S. We're gonna see what it comes with. A lot of people have been comparing this to the X1C. Now, it does look very familiar. We're gonna uh, unbox this, stack them up next to each other, and see what they look like. First, we have our instructions. I don't know if we'll be using these. And we do have an extra AMS we are going to add to this in another video. Next up, cables, tools, AMS tubing, and the P2S itself. And wow, this thing is shiny. Shiny like I definitely need to buy another printer shiny. Full enclosure, it looks like the X1C and the P1S had a baby and this baby is fast. And it weighs just enough to remind me, besides jujitsu, I'd need to go to the gym. As you see here, this is where the little control panel goes for the AMS. I'm really hoping that I'm going to be able to hook my AMS into this. I really plan on starting this part yet, but now as I'm looking at this, Use this little controller unit. It is supposed to be compatible with this. This does not look like it is going to fit, unfortunately, here. Okay, so we're gonna have to figure out what we need to do to get this to work. So that is going to be 100% a different video. And this is another one I have that's brand new that came with one of the other AMSs I bought. Same thing, I'm not gonna line up. Let me, let me turn this around for you guys so I can show you. So to my understanding, this was supposed to be compatible with the original AMS. This is the AMS controller board. You see where the screw holes are? So I'm just gonna go through and get all the rest of the screws out. I don't know if I need to show you that whole process, but I'm just gonna remove everything from the inside that was packing based so we got everything uh, completed installed and the printer updated as well as bamboo lab studio the only sort of issue i ran into is it wasn't recognizing my external spool at first i don't know if it was just because it the printer's new but it took it a second or it's the fact that i um haven't used a printer without an ams or a materials handling system in quite a while but i did go down a rabbit hole when i was looking at the ams hub i found out i actually needed a different ams hub on this printer and yes it was listed on the listing on bamboo labs i don't recall seeing it but it was listed there when I went to the website that I actually needed a different AMS hub for the P2S. Now what I also realized is the X1 Carbon is no longer available to purchase on the Bamboo Lab site, and it is only available in the wild, meaning at your local retailers. But we'll get back to that in a minute. First, let's check out the specs on the P2S. 
Speed, 500 millimeters per second, fast enough that your veggie will finish before you regret the print settings you chose. Acceleration, 20,000 millimeters per second squared. If you blink, your print is halfway done. Build volume is 256 by 256 by 256 millimeters. Perfect size for cosplay props, D&D terrain, and all the random gadgets I make instead of sleeping. The nozzle is hardened steel, aka eat carbon fiber for breakfast. It has a touchscreen, but it doesn't have LiDAR. We'll talk about that. Multicolor works with the AMS because life is better in four colors, unless you have eight, in which case you hit a new level. So let's check out our first print. There is our Benchy, and it looks really smooth. So let's try to answer the question everyone was previously asking about the P2S. And I say previously because, once again, we're going to get back to the X1C. So is the P2S just a clone of the X1C? Short answer is no, and the long answer is also no. So what's the same about both of them? They both have the same build volume, and they both have the same core X, Y, insanity speed. And they also have the same ability to run... Uh, filaments such as like carbon fiber. What are the main differences between these two printers? The X1 Carbon actually had LiDAR. It had first layer AI detection, spaghetti detection. It had this micro SD uh, slot on the side here. And it, for anyone who's had one, the bottom was harder to clean out because of this lip right here. So if we look at the P2S, we see we have a much nicer screen. It's roughly the same size. It's mounted higher, but it does seem a little clearer to me. It has a better extruder than the P1S, so it's an upgrade in the P-series. It has AI detection instead of the LiDAR. Now, what's interesting is not having the micro SD card on the side of the uh, control panel, but you have this USB that sits up here, which is sort of an interesting choice. It sort of reminds me of some of the resin printers and how they have this USB always sticking out of them. Um, I, I don't know if I'm a fan of this right here. I think they could have done a much better job, or maybe I just need to get one of those smaller USB cards. It's not even a USB-C, it is an actual USB. The other thing that I really found as an improvement is basically you're able to clean out the bottom. They've replaced that hard lip with a slanted lip so you can just pull all your filament pieces out, which is much nicer. So definitely a really nice printer for the price point. So if you want a printer that's gonna have some major print quality, print in high speeds, do multicolor, and not have a price tag that's gonna break the bank, I would say get the P2S. It's lighter, simpler, budget friendly, and it's just as ridiculously fast. This might be the new default recommendation I start giving out for 3D printers in 2026. That being said, I purchased the P2S thinking I would be able to use things I already had, such as my AMS hub, my AMS, and obviously things like my uh, flexi plates. While this video started as a comparison video, it actually turned into something else. That expensive X1C that a lot of us purchased seems to only be now available in the wild. So my question is how long to the parts for it are only available in the wild? Bamboo Lab has always been really great about providing really technical documentation in their wiki. And when I had issues with one of my printers, the tech support was honestly top notch. They're one of the best companies I've ever dealt with in tech support. In the near future, are we to have to buy used printers from other people in order to get donor parts, sort of like you do with classic cars? I don't know. As manufacturing tools, 3D printers will need replacement parts. I hope 3D printers don't go the way of becoming more non-repairable e-waste. E-waste is predicted to be over 82 million metric tons by 2030. And I just hope our 3D printers don't become part of that. So in my heart, I hope that all these 3D printer companies work at keeping parts in the supply or even the companies that make uh, additional parts, right? The, the aftermarket companies keep creating parts for these printers so we can keep them going as long as they can and they don't add to the issue of e-waste. 
Has the P2S replaced the X1C? I don't know, but it sure does feel like the X1C is going into obsolescence, as they say in the electronic space. I personally plan on driving all my printers till the wheels fall off, and if I can replace them even after that, I will. Okay, with all that being said, let me know your thoughts in the comments. For more on 3D printing, DIY, or maker projects, make sure you like and follow Maker Build It, and remember, keep on making. Oh, and remember, every print starts with an idea, every idea starts with a problem, so go solve something weird.